Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Risk takes the theme of climbing a mountain, like a Mount Everest type mountain, and puts it into a really, really small box with a dice rolling mechanism. Now, there is a game called K2, which I like better than this. It's bigger, it's grandiose, you have a lot more going on. And there have been a couple of games. I think the Race for the Summit was a card game about climbing a mountain, a uh, different kind of mountain, but yes, climbing a mountain. And I like those quite a bit also, but this does something a little bit different. Puts it in a small box, has this little neat little pressure like dice rolling mechanism as you're trying to go up. Now, there isn't a whole lot to this game. This is intended to be a very simple game, probably 10, 15 minutes max. Could be a light filler where people are showing up. My son likes this game quite a bit. We have a lot of fun playing it. And I have to say, while there isn't a lot to it, not a lot of strategy other than depressing your luck. And there are some really good pressure luck games out there. There's some really good ones that do just pressure luck and then bigger games that include pressure luck. So this is a very common mechanism to have. Does this one stand out in any discernible way? Probably not. This is something you would say, hey, it's in print. I wanted to press your luck. I like dice. I like the theme. I'm going to go after this one. With that said, we've had a lot of fun with it. It plays anywhere from two to four players, and you're having this battle up the mountain. I feel like if you get really far ahead, you know, is it possible that you roll the dice in such a way that you don't win? Sure. But if you get ahead, you know, really for like a couple guys ahead, I think you have an easier way to get to the finish line. But you can definitely come back on this, especially if somebody isn't patient and rolls the dice too much. So there's a lot of fun to be had in this little small box. If you can find this at a discounted price, I think it's well worth the purchase. But to just kind of know that you're not getting into this deep strategic game. It's a life filler and it's fun. What else could we want with a game? So for me, it's going to be a keeper to play with my son. High Risk, which is a little small game by Yellow. It plays two to four players and takes about 20 minutes. It's a very small portable box that you're going to get. When you open it up, you're going to get a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. You're going to get a little small board, which will be the mountain that you play. Very portable. Actually, you can play this on an airport very easily. You're going to get these little meeples that look like climbers. These are very, very nice. And you're going to get a set of six dice that you'll be able to utilize. Now, this game is very, very portable. The components are fine in little spots. But if you have a big table, it's going to dwarf this game. But you can kind of tell that from what you're trying to do here. It's just a simple pressure luck game, but the components are really good. Here's a rule book. You're going to get a little small rule book. It'll tell you the components with pictures, which is great. An overview of the game. And then the game elements and kind of how the board is broken up. Then you're going to have your climbers and the little signs that you're set out on the dice. Your setup that you play, depending on how many people are involved, will be how many mountaineers that you get. And then the explanation of the gameplay with pictures and examples. End of the game, who will be the winner, and the credits on the back. Rulebook's actually really good. You can play this really quickly and be up and running in maybe three minutes, three to five minutes. You should be good. Here's the game set up. You can see in a two-player game, you're going to have four Mountaineers there. We always roll the dice in the box just because it's such a portable game. It's very easy. I'm going to do so here. This is not in the rules. I just do it to utilize this. You're going to roll all six dice on your turn. If you roll any weathers or mountains, you would put those aside. And the red ones you can kind of keep there for now. Now, the weather dice do nothing. The mountain dice will allow you to move up a space for each mountain you have at the end of the turn. And these red ones do nothing but hurt you. I'll explain what else they do in a moment. But it's a pressure luck game. So I, what I could do, I can't re-roll these, but I could re-roll these if I so choose. But right now I'm not going to just to show you the turn of the game. I roll two mountains, so the red guy will move two spaces. Now these uh, camp spots, you can have as many people there as you want. These spots, you may only have one person. So the next player would then take his turn. So in this case, it would be yellow. And let's say they rolled something like this. They have three mountain spots. So let's say they go ahead and they will re-roll the dice, which they would be allowed to do. Oh, look at that. And they got two clouds and four mountains. They can take one of their workers and move it four spots. One, two, three, four. That's great. Now, this is called boosting. If you're able to get all of your dice on a side that's not the red, so at all six dice, non-red, then I get to immediately take another turn. So yellow would take another turn. Look, he did it again. One, two, three, four. I can move this guy four or a new person four. Now, I'll probably do is move this guy one, two, three, four, and then you would get to boost and to take another turn. And that's kind of how you do. Now, if you rolled 
this and say you don't want to press your lock, you could just stop and move like I did with the red. There's a few rules that you're going to have here. So multiple yellow, red, or whatever could be on these camp locations. That is a valid move. But let's say you had a guy here and red was going to move two spaces. Signify by these mountain dice. One, two, then I would kick this guy back to the next available spot. Let's say you had a space like this, and let's say he moved five mountains, the next person. So he go one, two, three, four, five. Yellow would take his spot, and then red would fall back to the next available spot. That's how that would work. Now, if you ever bust, let me show you how that works. Let's say I rolled four of those, and on my next roll, I rolled both of these are lightning. If you ever roll the dice and they're all lightning and you can't add anything mountain or weather, then you bust. And you have to pick one of your highest person up. So it would be, yeah, if it was yellow, it'd be this guy and he would move back to the next available space. If it was like this, then he would move below his next person and he would go there. If it was red who busted, then he would go below his next person which would be there. So you want to be very careful if you get somebody pretty close to the top, because then he would have to come all the way back below his next person. If anybody ever gets to the top of the summit, they're safe and can never fall back down. So let's do one more turn just to illustrate this, and we'll say this is Red's turn. So Red rolled three mountains, four mountains, and a weather. Well, he wouldn't roll this. That's a pretty good roll, so maybe I'll move those one, two, three, four, and take that spot. But let's say he didn't. Let's say he's gonna be an idiot and try to roll this. Oh, look, I rolled a cloud. So he would move one, two, three, four. All six dice are not red. So then he would boost and go again. So let's do this. I'm gonna to try to keep going until I bust, just to illustrate this. Okay, got another mountain, so I can keep rolling. I could, I could stop, but I'm gonna keep going because I wanna illustrate this. Look at this. I got one die. So normally I would probably stop here, but I didn't. So now I have to take whoever's at the top. These guys already cleared the mountain, so they do not count. This guy would have to come down. There's no other red, so he'd go all the way back to the beginning. First person to get all four of their people to the top is crowned the winner of the game. Who should buy this game? I think without a question, if you're looking for a pressure luck game with dice that's in print, this would be it. I think that's your target market. If you're giving something quick to play with some people, uh, maybe you're going to Thanksgiving dinner and you want to take a little game with you, you can play a couple people and just rolling some dice and people pressing your luck and, ah, I wanted to get that. You know, you have these moments in this game. This could definitely be it. Can you find this elsewhere? Is this probably in your collection somewhere else with a different name? Yeah, sure, possible. 100% guilty as charged. But if you're looking for a game like this, and I think people like that climbing up the mountain theme, I think it really works in this game. I think it's unique for that pressure luck about how you're going up. Fantastic. I had a lot of fun with this. My son and I have had a lot of fun. And although there isn't anything new, there's anything special, I can't deny we have fun with this one and that it's a keeper. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel, lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.